So, the last couple weeks, we've been talking about normal and this idea of normal, especially in a day and age right now where everything seems so abnormal, where there is very little of our lives, right, that are the way they were even six months ago. And it's so easy for us to get into this mindset of going, I've got to get back to normal. But is that going to be the best thing for us? There's a quote by a guy named John Ortberg that says, everyone's normal till you get to know them. Everyone's normal till you get to know them. So that, that guy you like, that you just think is so cool because he's got it all together and he, not normal. He's not, that girl that you've been staring at and you've been like, oh, she's perfect, dude. She's just, she's, she's an angel. Not normal. Not normal. Your detour group leader who shows up to youth group and just, I mean, speaks the word of God over your life and has just this amazing ability to communicate and connect with you. Not normal. They're not normal. And yet it is so easy, right, for us to look at people or to look at situations and go, wow, they're really normal. So I want to be like them. I want to do what they do. My nephew Josh is staying with us for the summer, and it's so cool having him at our house, and it's so cool having somebody different in our house. And I asked him the other night, I said, hey, Josh, what is something that we do in our family, that we do in our house <laughs> that's not normal? That's not the way that you do it. And I was a little bit afraid of his answer, but his answer was this. He's like, you guys have a schedule for like every second of the day. And I love that. I'm like, really? He said, yeah, at my house, there are like whole days where we don't have anything that we're supposed to do. We just, we just kind of just hang out. He goes, you guys, we wake up in the morning and it's like, all right, you ready for the next thing? And it's funny because he thinks that, now, I look at our house, and I'm like, man, feels like there's a whole lot of time where we're wandering around the house going, I'm bored. What can we do? And yet, from somebody else's perspective, you know, it, it looks very different. So this idea of normal can get pretty tricky. And now, take that idea of everybody's normal till you get to know them into, this, into situations where you decide that you want to be like somebody. Or you want life, your life, to be like their life. Or even when you consider your life and you go, I want to get back to what I consider normal and how we chase that. And a lot of times we don't even recognize in our life as we look at our life, we don't even notice our normal. There was a few years ago, I went ice skating with my kids and Luke and Allie Methvin, and we went down, we, we're going ice skating. And I, now, I was never an ice skater, but I used to ride rollerblades a lot, and I was pretty good at riding rollerblades. And that meant that there is some things that are similar with ice skating. And so I decided at my age now, having not rollerbladed or done really anything athletic in quite some time, it's like, I'm going to show them, like, how to skate. So I'm like zipping around, and they're like, and I saw them standing over in a clump, like in a cluster, and I'm like, I'm gonna spray them with ice. Cause like I had learned how to do that earlier in my life. And so I'm like, I'm just gonna go up and be like, you know, and spray them with. So I, I get it going as fast as I can. I'm coming across the rink. You know, I'm probably cutting off traffic, right? I'm just like, like I'm totally gonna get them. I get up to them and I go like this. Now, Ice skates on the front are kind of sharp. And when that part of the ice skate hits the ice, it sort of just goes chink and bounces off. So I'm moving. I am hauling. I'm, I mean, I'm real, I was impressive. And I'm like, shh, this chink. Like, I hit my toe on the ice and went flying. I never even hit the ground. 
before I hit the boards on the side of the rink, I just slammed into the boards. <laughs> and I dropped in a heap down on the ice. I look up. Luke and Allie and Carter and Emma and Nathan are like. And I just look up at them. I'm like, oh, it hurt. <laughs> so I get up and my friend Larry, who's even older than I am, it, he he's like, man, are you okay? He must have been con concerned. I'm like, yeah, what do you think? I'm Tim Longo? I'm fine. And so I'm like, I, yeah, I'm okay. I, sk I go skating away, right? Because you're not gonna, just going to go, like, cry. So I, I skated away and I cried. I, but I, I go down the ice. I'm like, this hurts so bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably never going to recover from this. I might. <laughs> now. The ironic thing is, my left thumb really hurt. And it was already swelling up. Now, what are you supposed to do when you hurt something? That's right, put some ice on it. Problem is, I'd already done that, and it hurt. So I walk away, and or I skate away, and I finally I go sit down in the bleachers, and. Everybody, because they cared about me, kind of like, are you okay, Jeff? I'm like, I'm fine. It's totally good. They're like, how's your hand? Shut up. Fine. <laughs> it hurt so bad. So eventually later that night after, like, my pride, like, the swelling in my pride went down, I went to the, the hospital because my thumb swelled up and turned purple. I'm like, eh, I should probably get that looked at. So I went to the hospital. They look at it, and they go, yeah, I, I think you just jammed it. I'm like, I don't know. It hurts pretty bad. I, they're like, yeah, you just jammed it. I'm like, all right. So I went home. I put some more ice on it. I woke up in the morning. It was purple and swollen and hurt. Went through that day, and I'm trying to, like, I can't use my left hand. I'm just – and – Two days went by. My phone rings. I look at the caller ID. It says Kaiser. Hello? Hi, Jeff. This is uh, Tamara at uh, Kaiser Orthopedics. Uh, we went ahead and took a second look at your thumb x-rays. Uh, we're going to need you to come on in. I'm like, why? Like, Because your thumb's broken. Like, I knew it! I go in. They put a cast on my thumb. It hurts so bad, but they, they put a cast on my thumb. Now, how many of you in here have ever broken a, a bone, anything? You've, you've broken, okay. Now, how many of you in here have ever had a cast? Okay. How many of you have ever broken something and had a cast on your non-dominant whatever? So, like, I'm right-handed. This was my left thumb, all right? So, you know, my my left thumb. What do you use your left thumb for? Nothing. Well, it turns out most things, you know, like picking stuff up, reaching for doorknobs and being able to open a door. I was shocked at the number of normal things that I do with my left hand. But until I was in a situation where normal was removed, I didn't even recognize how important this other left thumb I mean I'm still don't really know what I do with my left thumb but I'll tell you as long as that thumb was not available to me normal was super weird and I had to find new ways or different ways of doing all kinds of different stuff now we have all kinds of things in our life that we walk through where we end up broken and I'm not talking broken bones. I'm talking we get brokenhearted. We get disappointed. We get let down. We get frustrated. We get isolated and quarantined against our will. And all of a sudden, normal, the stuff that we, we didn't even realize was important to us, becomes really important. And that can add to the frustration of just going, why can't I just want to get back to normal? I couldn't wait to get the cast off, so I didn't go to open a door and go and have to switch hands, right? I wanted to be able to have, 
hold a glass of water in either hand. Without, and it can make us realize, wow, what I had before, I really like, and that's the way I want to get back to. So this idea of normal is normal. But it can be super easy for us to set our mind in a place of going, and that's what I want. I just want things to be the way they've always been. I just want to be able to do the stuff that I want to do, that I know how to do, that's easy to do, that's safe to do, that's predictable to do. I just want to do that. And not look for anything else. Not look for any other ways of doing stuff. But before we settle for normal, let me ask you this, and I just want you to think about this tonight. What are you basing normal on? In your life, with your friendships, in your families, in the stuff that you do for hobbies, in your schedule, in your achievements, what are the things that you consider normal, and where does that basis for normal come from? What makes you call that normal? What, because it's the way it's always been? Because it's your daily routine? Because it's what you've been told is you're supposed to do it that way? But what are you basing your normal on? Because we can accept all kinds of things as normal where there is so much better. If you read the book of Exodus, a big chunk of Exodus is about the children of Israel in Egypt. The children of Israel were enslaved in Egypt for 430 years. 430 years. You know what's crazy? I mean, think about, and, and it describes it in Exodus where it talks about how they ma had to make these mud bricks and they had to gather straw and they would they would put straw in the bricks and mix up the cement and they'd form the bricks then they'd have to haul these bricks I mean it was backbreaking work and then they're being beaten and killed I mean it was it was a nightmare for 430 years their children their grandchildren their great grandchildren their great great grandchildren their great 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 grandchildren and you know what happened? Even though it was awful, even though it was a nightmare of a life, it became normal. It became what they just knew to expect. And they stopped looking for anything else. They stopped expecting anything else. And in Exodus 14, God sends Moses Moses goes to him and says, hey, God is going to set you free. You know what they told him? Go home. Wait, wait. No, maybe you didn't hear me. 430 years of slavery. God's going to set you free. Yeah, nah. Nah. They had settled in their mind that this was life. They'd settled, they'd made up in their mind, this is the way things were going to be for forever. And even when God sent someone to say, hey, I'm going to change things. I have something more for you. I have something better for you. They rejected it. We hear that and we go, that's crazy. Who would do that? I would do that. Because normal is... Normal. Normal is predictable. Normal is safe. Well, it feels safe, because usually because it's predictable. Normal can mean that there's not any additional pressure to step out into the unknown. And we, are, we can be so quick, even in a bad situation, to go, I'll stick with normal. I'll just go with what I know. I'll go with what I'm told to expect. And after 430 years of slavery, the children of Israel said, eh, this is normal. Even to this point, God sets them free. You've, we've all probably heard at least parts of the story of all the plagues in Egypt where God sends the plagues. And finally, Pharaoh goes, 
fine, get out of here. And he lets the children of Israel go. They're no longer enslaved. They are allowed to leave Egypt. So they leave Egypt. They're out there. They're headed out. Moses is leading them. They're like, woohoo, this is great. They turn around and they see that Pharaoh and all his chariots and everything are coming after him. You know what they do? After 430 years of slavery, 430 years of watching their ancestors be murdered, 430 years of backbreaking, torturous work, you know what they said when they saw something coming up behind them, when they saw Pharaoh coming after them? You know what? We're, we're good. Let's just go back. Let's go back to the slavery. Let's go back to the bondage. Let's go back to the beatings. Let's go back to the abuse. Let's go back to the things because at least we know that stuff. And they look at Moses and they say, what was this? You just brought us out here to die. Let us just go back to normal. Let's go back to normal. Let me ask you this. Why do we tend to believe that normal is always what's behind us? Why do we believe that normal is always what's in our past and not something that's supposed to be in our future? Why? Why do, why do we look at back there and go, yes, that, that is what we should expect. That is what I want to live for. That is what I want to lead my life, to guide my future, and not go, you know what? Maybe I haven't found normal yet. Maybe God has something for me that is going to just blow my mind. Maybe the stuff that I've been calling normal, the stuff that I've been settling for, and being comfortable with was death. But I called it normal because I got used to it. I got used to the slavery. I got used to the abuse. I got used to the hopelessness. I got used to the stuff that, you know, yeah, it was miserable and awful, but you know what? I could expect it. Why do we all so easily tend to think that normal is back there rather than out here? I don't know what that means for you. I don't know how you interpret that as a seventh grader, as a tenth grader, as a senior, as a super senior, as an adult. But would you, are you willing to consider that maybe God has a normal for you that you haven't seen yet? And as long as you keep looking back, you're going to be attached to that. In Genesis chapter 19, there's an, an account of a guy named Lot and his family. God was bringing Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah, these evil cities where demonic things were happening, and God was going to destroy the city. So he tells Lot and his wife and his children, leave the city and don't look back. Now, why didn't he want them to look back? Because there was nothing meaningful back there for him? No, that was their life. Because there was nothing to see? No. Nope. You ever left someplace that was important to you? You want to keep it in sight for as long as you can. God told him, you leave and don't look back. Because when we look back, there is this tendency in us to get attached to what we've, we've experienced in our past. We have this tendency to look back and long for what we used to experience which means when we're looking back, we've taken our eyes off of what God has for us in our future. And yes, in seventh grade, you are old enough to have to already experience this. Where you look back and you're like, ah, the in high school, you can look back and be like, ah, oh, yeah. When I was eight, life was so easy. When you're a senior, when you're graduated. You look back at your freshman year and you're like, oh, <laughs> cake. When we look back, we get so tempted to fall in love with where we've been and to get attached to where we've been. And it makes it really hard to consider, you know what, maybe God has normal for me in my future and I haven't even experienced it yet. 
Are we willing to look forward? I heard a pastor recently talking a message, and he was talking about this quarantine stuff and how being alone or being isolated, being quarantined, can really mess with your mind, can really mess with your heart because it's, it's messing with your normal. None of us are experiencing normal. Do we agree with that? I, I don't think there's any of us are going, oh, my life's exactly the same. But what's interesting is that, and this is what the pastor was pointing out, he said, some of you, I, I want to make sure I get this right, some of the stuff you're praying for right now is stuff you were praying away four months ago. Some of the stuff you're praying for now, you're going, God, let me hang out with my friends. And four months ago, you were going, God, Help me to know if I'm supposed to be hanging out with, the, with these friends. Now, you're praying, God, please let me be able to play sports again. Let them open up baseball. Let them open up soccer. Let them open up the climbing gym. Please, let me get back to my sports. And four months ago, you were going, I am so busy. I'm playing on three different teams. I'm doing travel ball four nights a week. On weekends, I'm, tra- I'm going. Some of the stuff that you're praying for now, you were praying to be away from four months ago. God, help me be able to slow down. God, break habits and routines that are bad for me. And now we're praying, God, let me get back into those habits and routines. What do you believe God has for you for your future? And are you willing to consider? And this is going to be up to you. Nobody can make you. I'm throwing this out to you. I'm praying about it for myself. What are you open to God putting into your life and doing in your life that is a normal you have not experienced yet. Sometimes my answer to that is nothing. I want my life just the way it is. Right? We go through seasons where life is good. We like what's going on and everything's just fine. And so then we live a life that's like, huh, I better be really careful. I don't want to screw this up. Other times, life is horrible. Life is really hard. And we live a life in a, we live life in those times in a way that goes, get me out of this. I don't care. Get me out. Get me away. Remove this. I don't want to deal with this anymore. And in both those situations, the things that we miss are what God may want to do in your life that is normal. Where he would say to you, yeah, I know you're comfortable in your routine. I know you're comfortable with this group of friends. I know you're comfortable with this schedule. I know you're comfortable with this, with uh, striving for this achievement. Are you willing to go, you know what? I'm going to stop looking behind me at what I've called normal. And God, I am ready for you to do something in me that's up ahead that is going to bring life to me like I've never seen before. Because guess what? What's behind you will always be there, and you'll never get anywhere. What's behind you will always be there. You can always run back to the friends. But where did they get you? You can always run back to the routine, but there will never be anything new. But if we will put our faith in God, in a God who sets people free, you guys, when we read this, it is not a history book. 
It's not just stuff to memorize. It's not stuff to come to youth group and listen to Jeff tell you what to think about it. This is God's word to us. And what he shows us in here is that he, has a, he is a God of a new normal. He is a God of a normal that's ahead of you. And right now, that is so hard to keep our eyes on because all we, all we feel like we can see is what's behind us. So I want to challenge you to do this. Turn around. Now, just as a little example, I saw three of you turn around. Three of you. I said, turn around, and three of you turned around. That's what we do in life. We see God, or we feel God, or we hear God tell us, hey, I've got something different for you. Turn around. Move ahead. Quit looking behind you. Turn around. And we go, uh, oh, he doesn't mean it. <laughs> He's not serious. I mean, I'm not, I don't actually have to. I don't actually have to not hang out with these friends. I don't actually have to not play on this sports team. I don't actually. Are you willing to go? You know what? Yeah, I've I may have called all these things behind me normal. But I am willing to lay all that down. So that I can see what God has ahead of me. I want you guys to watch and listen to this song. It's one of my favorite songs ever. Like, ever in all of the music that I have ever listened to, this is one of my favorite songs. I want you to pay really close attention, not just to the overall message, but specifically to the words of this song. And I want you to pray through this song. I, I, I want to encourage you. I want to invite you to, to, as you're listening to this, go, God, stir up in me where this is me. Stir up in me what I need to pay attention to and what you're calling me to. And see how God wants to speak to you. Clear the stage and set the sound and the lights ablaze. If that's the measure you must take to crush the idols. Jerk the pews and all the decorations too Until the congregation's few and have revival Tell your friends that this is where the party ends Until you're broken for your sins You can't be social And seek the Lord and wait for what he has in store and know that great is your reward so just be hopeful cause you can sing all you want to yes you can sing all you want to you can sing all you want to and still get it wrong oh worship is more than a song take a break from all the plans that you have made and sit at home alone and wait for god to whisper beg him please to open up his mouth and speak and pray for real upon your knees until they blister shine the light on every corner of your life until the pride and lust and lies are in the open and read the word and put to test the things you've heard until your heart and soul are stirred and rocked and broken cause you can sing all you want to yes you can sing all you want to you can sing all you want to and still get it wrong oh worship is more than a song we must not worship something that's not even worth it 
Is an idol. Anything I want with all my heart is an idol. And anything I can't stop thinking of is an idol. I can sing all I want to, yes I can, sing all I want to. the stage and set the sound and lights ablaze that's the measure you must take to cross the idol so for us clear the stage if that's the measure you must take see we don't want to get extreme we don't want to have to do anything that's like, whoa, I'm not giving that up. I'm not, I'm not going to walk away from that. Because it's normal. And normal can be an idol. I think we all do it. Normal can be an idol. Some of the things that he said there at the end, tell your friends, this is where the party ends. Until you're broken for your sins, you can't be social. Anything I put before my God is an idol. Anything I want with all my heart is an idol. Anything I can't stop thinking of is an idol. Anything I give all my love is an idol. Normal can be an idol. And yet, we look at that and we go, I can't wait to get, I can't wait to get back. I'll do whatever I have to do to get back. When God's out in front going, come here. I have what I want you to call normal. Tonight, we are going to worship God by bringing ourselves to him. And again, this is going to be your choice. Nobody's going to be evaluating how you do this or whether you look sincere or participate at the right level. And staff, if you guys want to go ahead and head out. Um, but my prayer, my hope, and guys, I've been praying about this all week and just I, I want so badly for this not to just be youth group. And okay, now we're going to do this little activity or now we're going to sing songs or now we're going to play a game. Guys, this is... The living God is going, I have something for you that I want you to call normal. So what we're going to do is out in the gravel lot, there are six, I don't know, stations. Where I want to ask you to go and spend some time at each one. Now, every one may not connect to you. Every one, every station may not be something that you really identify with and you're like, oh, yeah, that's my normal that I need to say no to. But I want to ask you, each of you, to go to each of the stations and prayerfully go, God, what do you have here? What have I been calling normal that you want to say, no, 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 I have a new normal for you. And so when you go out there, you're going to see 
when a station that is, is labeled habits, the habits that you call normal, where you go, I can't help it. It might be an addiction. It might be an attraction. It might be something that you just, you, you, and you, you just call it normal, and you're like, eh, I can't do anything about it. Friendships. Relationships in your life where you're so quick to defend. You're like, oh, but they're my friends. Are they the friends that God has for you? Or does he have new relationships for you that he wants you to call normal? Schedule. The schedule that you've been calling normal, is it the normal that God has for you? The schedule that has kept you so busy, the schedule that has kept you entertained, whatever it may be, is, is that the normal God has for you? Achievement. The achievement that you call normal where you go, oh, if I don't attain this, I'll die. Oh, if I don't get the straight A's, if I don't make varsity, if I don't get on the team, if I don't get the part. What's the, what's the achievement you've been calling normal? Doubt and fear. What is the doubt and the fear that you've just been living with? You've just been calling it normal. You don't even question it anymore. You're afraid. You have all kinds of questions and fears, but you just, it's what you know. And you live with it. And self-importance. What is the normal self-importance where you, you live your life and you're just like, yeah, it's important that I look out for myself. You can call it selfishness. You can call it self-care. You can call it all kinds of things, but where the, your normal is, yeah, me first. And how would God call you to surrender that? So what I want to ask you to do is go to each of the stations. If you get to a station and you feel like, yeah, this is really where God wants to do some work. I need to spend some time in this spot. Spend time in that spot. You can spend more time in one place than, than the others. It doesn't have to be this equal thing. If you go through each station and you're like, all right, I'm done. Look how quick I did that. I'm going to ask you not to come back to the grass and sit down until we call you back to the grass. So if you go through all the stations and you're like, all right, I'm done, go around again. Because I can tell you there are all kinds of times that because I'm in a hurry or because I'm not really into it or whatever, it takes some time for God to get a hold of my heart. So if you go through real quick and we're still doing it, go through again. And prayerfully go, God, what do you want to raise my awareness to? And as we do this, again, might not be for you, but for somebody else, please wear your mask. Please stay as socially distant as you're able to. Uh, again, if not for you, for somebody else. Um, and go ahead, and you, there's no order of the station. You can go wherever you want. Uh, but go ahead and head out to the gravel lot, and we will call you back. Don't come back to your seat, or don't leave until we call you back. So here is here's one of the things as we leave tonight. It's kind of like the last day at camp when <laughs> we finish up Rock the Boat and or you go to winter camp and you have a great weekend and there's this mindset that we may leave here and be like, there, I've conquered it. I'm ready for a new normal. I'm never going to look back. It's going to be easy. I'm going to be all whatever you go, fixed. And then we wake up tomorrow, and man, normal, I just want normal. So here's what I want to encourage you with. The Bible promises us, God promises us, that he is greater in you than anything that's in the world. So that's where we step out in faith. Going, God, I need you to be greater than my habits and my addictions and my dysfunctions. God, I need you to be greater than the influences of my friends and the people around me. 
God, I need you to be greater than the hopelessness that I feel in my family. And we step out in that every day, and we take every thought captive to the authority of Christ when we start to believe that, oh, no, 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 your best days are behind you. And that we would look ahead and we go, God, lead me to where you want me. And we're going to fail. We're going to mess up. This is why we need Jesus. So you're not going to do this perfect. And tomorrow isn't necessarily going to look like a brand new day. Maybe it will, which is beautiful and wonderful and celebrate that. But will you trust that God has a purpose and a plan and a normal And are you willing to remember and consider that maybe the normal that you keep trying to get back to has been death all along? And what God has for you and is leading you to is life. So, Lord God, we ask that you would come and do this supernatural work that only you can do. God, I pray for those that are here tonight that are really wrestling with letting go. Because we like the familiar, we like the comfortable. And we'll just confess that, God. We, we like what we know, we like what we can control. And I pray, God, that tonight would be a marker. That tonight would be a marker in our life that we'd be able to look, look to and go, hey, on that night, God revealed himself to me in a way that I realized I don't need to keep looking back at my past. I don't, I don't need to settle for the normal that I've always known because, man, God had something better for me. And I pray that you would do that in each one of us, that you would meet us right here. And God, that you would supernaturally anoint our path to know that it is where you're leading us. We love you, God. Help us to love you. And that we would never make normal an idol, but that we would always look to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we always say, and we want you guys to know, um, the adult staff that is here, we are not here because you need supervision. We are here because we want to walk with you on this journey. And we, it doesn't mean that we have it all figured out and we've got all the answers, but we want to be a source of encouragement, a source of walking with you and leading you in the ways of in the way of Jesus. And so if you want to come and talk to one of the staff, we are not too busy. We want to talk with you. We will pray with you um, and and be with you on this journey of faith and life. That's why we're here. Um, last thing tonight as we leave to let you know that the beach trip on Saturday, we are going to be down in Huntington Beach at Tower 9. Uh, there is a state beach and a city beach. We are in the city beach, Huntington Beach, like by the town, um, not at the state beach. And so we're going to be at Tower 9 uh, around 11 o'clock, and we'll hang out there. All the food and transportation down there, getting there, you are on your own. Uh, you, you, you handle all that. But we're going to be down there, and we can hang out, and it'll be a uh, really fun day and all of that. And then... What was the other one, Tim? Is there any other? Oh, yeah. And then Sunday, we are going to be here from 6 to 7.30 for our service on Sunday evening, and we would love to see you then. Cool? Good? Love you guys. Super glad that you were here. Have a good night. Have a great week.